Today is the, uh, what, 22nd of June. It's Wednesday, 22nd of June, otherwise known as Heyday. Heyday. Heyday is the worst day of the year for grass pollen, uh, which leads to misery if you suffer from hay fever. Well, we're joined now by Dr. Apeles Akons, who's a specialist in allergies. Uh, and, uh, thank you. For, I hope I pronounced your name correctly there. Very good. Give it a good go. Um, look, it seems to me, and this is from a sort of layman's perspective, as though hay fever is getting worse. It's getting more widespread. And I don't know if that's because I'm in a very polluted city um, or if there's any link with just getting warmer and higher temperatures. What's your take on it? It's a very good point. Um, it's known that uh, pollution creates microcrystallization, and that increases humidity above cities. That holds particles in the air. We are affected. And when they did a study many years ago to compare pollen in cities compared to pollens outside in the countryside, they found that, surprisingly, the cities had worse pollen prevalence and allergies. Gosh, OK, so if you're in the city, then you might not be mad if you're feeling like you're really suffering with hay fever mm. at the moment. But the irony is, I mean, we don't really associate cities with trees and grass, and they are the big villains in all of this. That's right. Can I just mention that uh, hay fever is a misnomer, first of all. There's no fever <laughs> and <Right>. no hay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's mainly tree pollens, usually starting in the early spring, yeah. and carry on to the late spring, and also grass pollen, this time of the year, June, July. Um, it, we, we know that the single most important factor in the prevalence of pollen is humidity. Humidity means that uh, the environment is damp. This morning, coming from West Sussex, I thought that there was visible fog. Mm -hmm. That's the evaporation of water makes everything so much more airborne, whereas Going to a southern country, for instance, like uh, Mediterranean, you lose that phenomenon because their rainfall is much lower. Is it possible to look at hay fever as almost two different versions of it? So if you live in Manchester or Newcastle or here in London, compared to where you live or came from this morning in West Sussex, there are different sorts of treatments. So, for example, you could take local honey in somewhere like West Sussex and you might get some immunity to it, but that is not true in, in city centres. Right, Some you. people have found this quite useful, but is, uh, the evidence is anecdotal. Oh, really? I don't think scientific enough to rely on that. I quite like the idea that these fix this problem. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. well, one, way, one way to fix it, of course, is to shower regularly your hair, your clothes, you know, yes. throw them into the wash. So give people that advice, people who are suffering throughout the day. Good point. Uh, usually we have the exposure in the daytime, and we go, when we go back home... This is the time when the symptoms come in earnest. And, of course, washing, having a shower and changing clothes and having an air purifier at home can make a big difference. Can it? Yeah. Yeah. We want to know all those tricks. I mean, people who do, I'm, I'm, thankfully, I don't suffer from it, but um, not that you can get confident about that because I believe you can contract it at any stage in your life. Well, the good news is that uh, hay fevers don't last more than 5 to 25 years. You don't see many elderly people having hay fever these days. Um, and some uh, other good news is that um, the testing for allergies and the, the treatments, preventative treatments for uh, allergies, has become more common in the last 20 years. Uh, in the mid-80s, we went back to the dark ages, as far as allergies are concerned, and uh, what happened is that the medical profession gave up testing people, let alone treating them. Right. Now we see that coming back, and GPs and hospital departments, they've got readily available tests, and also some of them offer some treatments. And, Doctor, can you be vaccinated against it? Absolutely. Yes? There are, we call this desensitization or immunotherapies, which aim to give tiny doses of yes. different allergens in order to stimulate these uh, allergy cells to perform better, to stop fussing about different things in the air, because they exaggerate the reactions they have. I, I'm surprised I don't hear more about that. Um, I hear about antihistamines, uh, we talk about washing the pollen from your hair and your clothes and that sort of thing. But if a number of relatively simple injections, because it would get rid of the misery, and it is misery for those who suffer from it, why, why aren't we hearing more about that? Why isn't that more widespread? Part of that is because um, the initial immunotherapy, uh, which was injectable or subcutaneous immunotherapy, cost some lives in Britain, oh. and that gave it a bad name. That has been succeeded or evolved to sublingual immunotherapy, yes. which is extremely safe.
-hmm. but also there are some other treatments which are considered outside of the conventional medicine, which are not publicized in, in, in mainstream medicine. Okay. So, uh, happy heyday. Um, well, I hope it is, if you follow what the doctor had to say there. Um, but uh, that's what it is. 22nd of June, uh, which is the peak, uh, the worst day of the year for grass pollen. Uh, so that's going to affect you if you do suffer from hay fever. Thank you very much indeed, doctor. Appreciate it.